first ever full on live ass dogfish. We don't know what's gonna happen. This is like when MTV launched and they, they showed that the, the Boogles uh, video, video killed the radio star, or when Saturday Night Live started and Elvis Costello sang a song that he wasn't supposed to. That's the kind of history we're making here today at the first ever live ass dogfish. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to listen one try. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Ask Dogfish is now live. Let's do this, guys. All right. First question comes in from Andrew Rigney. Mm -hmm. Great limited bottle releases so far. What yes. others can we expect in 2018 and beyond? So limited bottle releases. I'm wondering if that means stuff that is coast-to-coast -coast distributed or local. So I'll kind of answer on both. One that I'm excited that was limited and now is going to be way easier to find is our Wood Aged Bitches Brew, which just started shipping out to market. So you'll be able to find that puppy regularly. Um, one that's coming out this summer that I'm really, really excited about that is truly limited is our Mixed Media. So we did a beer called Noble Rot that is barley legal in the sense that anything to be defined, defined as a beer by the federal government has to be at least 50.1% fermented from barley. Uh, and that's what Noble Rot was, and 49.9% fermented from grapes. Well, we've made a beautiful new version of a beer wine hybrid based on a Belgian sort of Saison base uh, called Mixed Media, and that one's coming at you uh, this summer. And then super duper limited release beers. We just did a really uh, fun one recently called End of the Wart As You Know It, and that one was only available here uh, at, our, at our own uh, tasting room in Milton. And this coming Saturday, We'll be doing a 200 bottle release of In Your Mace, our collaborative uh, milk stout that we did with our pals from Mace uh, Security Spray. So always lots of fun batch, small batch stuff happening at Dogfish. Uh, check dogfish.com for what's on the horizon. Um, our friend Craig from Facebook is asking, he says, Namaste in cans, talk to me about that. While I'm drinking a Namaste in a bottle, let me tell you about Namaste in cans. Uh, we are not giving up on the bottle of, of Namaste because we a lot of people love drinking it that way. Similarly to 60 Minute, we those thought there were occasions for drinking that we were missing by only having uh, 60 in a bottle, and we brought it out in cans last year, year round, to a uh, wonderful reception. Similarly, this year we're making the bold move. Namaste, we think, is one of the most beautifully well differentiated uh, Belgian style white beers. Known to man, traditionally Belgian white beers are very slight variations of the exact same recipe. You know, wheat beer with a touch of coriander and a touch um, of uh, orange peel. Ours is super well differentiated in that it's got lemongrass in it and orange flesh, not just the peel. Uh, so Namaste is a beautiful beer that now will be available in six pack glass and in 12 pack cans. Uh, look for it wherever you find uh, 60 Minutes going coast to coast in cans uh, as we talk live now. So this one comes from Paul S. on Twitter. He says, aging non-ages well beers. Good or bad? Question mark. I have a random assortment I've been putting aside like Thea Broma from a couple years ago. So aging beers that weren't designed specifically to be aged from Paul-esque. I mean that... He's yes. sort of like Paul, he's Paul S. Yes, yes. Paul S? Paul, last name starts with S. Oh, yes. yes. okay. Truly Paul S. So, <laughs> uh, it's, it's always, everyone's palate's different, right? So, if you like beers that have uh, sort of those oxidized, sherry-like notes, generally the line of demarcation is somewhere around 9 or 10% alcohol. Uh, hops are, are recognized as like a preservative for beer, but in reality hops do not work well for aging strong beers to the same degree that alcohol by volume does. So if your beer is over 9% ABV, especially if it has darker grains in it, which also helps with ageability, um, knock yourself out if you want to give it a try to see if a beer uh, ages well. I know in our portfolio, beers like Palo Santo Maron and uh, Bitches Brew now are beers that are nowhere near as strong as 120 Minute or Worldwide, and they're actually not nearly as, ex as expensive as 120 Minute and Worldwide, so they make really affordable, bulletproof beers to put into your beer cellar. 
look for Bitches Brew, look for Palo, awesome aging beers between that 9% and 13% ABV. So this one comes from Brandon Rooks on Facebook. Hi Sam, any plans to release any other beers in cans? Brandon asks if we have a plan to release other beers in cans. Um, so we are really, really excited that we are now starting to ship to certain markets our old pal 90 Minute, the OG Imperial IPA, the OG continually hopped uh, beer that we started doing that really unique process that's all uh, you know central to our, our IPAs. Uh, 90 Minute is now getting ready to be shipped in four packs of 16 ounce cans. Uh, not getting to every market right away, but certainly on its way. Um, in the same way that 90 minutes really well differentiated from the boiling process and dosing in small increments of hops the entire time we boil it, which makes for a beer that's profoundly enjoyably hoppy without being crushingly bitter. Uh, we've come up with a pretty cool innovation on a new beer called uh, Liquid True Serum, which actually came out recently in bottles and was so beloved. It's basically a 100% post-boil IPA. We don't add any of the hops until we're done boiling the beer. So the myth is a beer only picks up IBUs, international bittering units, if you add the hops in the boil. The truth is Liquid True Serum got all of its IBUs, over 60 IBUs, with nothing but post-boil hop additions of every format of hops, from oils to whole leaf uh, to pellet uh, and beyond. And yes, we are excited to say that beer too is coming out in cans. 16 ounce cans of Liquid True Serum. You heard it here first on Ask Dog Fish Live. All right, from at Crooped 13. Mm -hmm. um, I am Crooped. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember from uh, Galaxy's? Guardians of the Guardians so good. That's not actually probably how he spells it. <laughs> and I'm saying <Sam>, though. <laughs> what would you say has been your most favorite creation so far and why? Uh, my favorite creation, my wife Mariah has reminded me of a better answer of my children, Sammy and Greer, definitely in my top 10, okay? Uh, in terms of liquids, like our children, we love all of our liquids equally, but like my daughter Greer, when she's moody and mean to me, sometimes I like hanging out with certain of my children more than other of my children. Greer, that's a note to you to be sweeter to your dad. Uh, and in the last year, I've been hanging out an awful lot with my old pal Sea Quench Ale. Uh, I've never spent more time in my career as a brewer in the last 23 years working on a single recipe. Uh, I'm super proud of how well differentiated Sea Quench Ale is. For those of you less familiar with her, the name comes from its three beers. It's a mashup, a hybrid of a Kolsch, a Berliner Weiss, and a Goza brewed in sequence. Uh, but we use sea salt black limes and lime juice in the recipe. So the yada yada yada, Sequench Ale is the lowest calorie, lowest carb beer we've ever brewed coast to coast for production. Uh, and it's a very, um, uh, basically a, 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 a very thirst quenching beer that can appeal, it's only got like 10 IBUs, almost no hot bitterness. Uh, so it appeals to margarita drinkers, uh, Michelob Ultra drinkers, uh, minerally Pinot Gris drinkers as much as it appeals to hopheads and it's officially the fastest growing beer in the history of dogfish head so if you haven't found sequench ale yet look for it wherever you buy awesome beer or enter and run in a warrior dash dogfish heads sequench ale is the official beer of warrior dash we're proud of that too that was probably a long less answer i want to in closing i love sammy and greer equally along with their mom mariah Tomorrow's Valentine's Day. Drink your beer. Oh, <laughs> not the boss of me. I'm choosing to drink my beer. From our friend Ray Seamus, if you didn't brew beer, what would you do for a living? I'd like to think I'd host video casts, like uh, you know, video events. Probably, I'd probably do that. <laughs> uh, no, if I could do something other than brew for a living. I'd probably love to teach writing and, and be a short story writer, do those things in tandem, probably for high school, because I think college kids could tell I'm not that smart, but maybe the high school kids couldn't. They didn't know enough yet. They didn't read enough yet. They didn't have enough good professors. Um, what's the biggest challenge that dogfish faces today? 
what is the biggest challenge that Dogfish Head faces today? Oh, that's an awesome one. Uh, we often talk about uh, the, the competitive world, and it's never been a more competitive moment in the beer industry than it is today, and competition's good. It makes the strong survive, and I think the breweries that survive this competitive moment, are, it's not gonna have anything to do with scale. It's gonna be breweries that are awesome at quality, consistency, and being well differentiated and have amazing people uh, you know, leading the charge at their company. So I'm not nervous or anxious about where Dogfish Head is in the marketplace right now. I, I guess if there's anything for me that's a frustration is there's definitely a lack of transparency on where real craft beers come from. Uh, are they coming from true indie craft breweries? Or are they fictitious brand made up by multinational conglomerates? Or are they brands that were once indie craft that are now controlled by some non-indie craft uh, entity? So I wish there was more transparency. I salute the Brewers Association's efforts uh, to build a campaign and a shield that allows consumers to understand who really makes the beers that they believe are, are craft. From our pals at Backstage Brewing Company, you can pick one hop. Go. You can pick your friends. You can pick your nose. You can't pick just one hop. There's so many great different hops out there. I'd say Dogfish Head definitely leans heavily towards uh, the Northwest in terms of the bulk of where our hops come from. Favorites like Amarillo, favorites like Cascade. But I'm super psyched about a beer wine hybrid that's on tap at our pub right now that has this beautiful sort of uh, a, a sort of noble Hallertau uh, German hop that throws melon character into the beer. So I don't really have one favorite hop in the same way that I don't have uh, you know one favorite favorite, favorite beer other than Sea Crunch. From Jim, just finished reading Off-Centered Leadership. Does Dogfish plan on doing more books in the future? My wife's shaking her head no about um, doing more books. We, we've joked now that if I ever write another book, it'll be called Why I Got Divorced by Sam Calagione. Uh, uh, that but was two books ago. That was two books ago. I'm still happily married, uh, but I shouldn't push my luck. I'm proud that just hitting the market in the last few months is a book... Uh, called Project Extreme Brewing that I got to bright, brew, uh, write, uh, really curate with the Alstrom brothers of Beer Advocate fame, Jason and Todd, my great friends. I say curate because uh, dozens and dozens of awesome indie craft brewers from Carton and Kane down the road from us, uh, Burley Oak literally down the road in Maryland to Treehouse and other half, all these awesome indie craft brewers from the top across the country uh, contribute these beautiful uh, creative recipes to Project Extreme Brewing. So I'm super proud of that, that book. Uh, uh, and I don't know, I, I doubt I'll write another book uh, someday. I tried to sell a book idea that me and the artist Mark Spusta, if you love the artwork from last year's art series, Mark Spusta did it. I tried to pitch a, a book for child, children's book called It's a Hippopoctopus, where I showed like an adult hippopotamus, whatever that thing is, and an adult octopus falling in love, mating, having a really odd looking child that I thought would be a way to make the, you know, bring the world together and promote like, you know, interrelations. I don't know, I guess the literary world wasn't ready for it. Maybe it is now. So we've gotten this question from quite a few folks across our different channels about what your thoughts are on uh, stone. The surface? That and also the brewery. Stone Brewery, one of our great friends, uh, Dogfish Head, uh, Mariah and I were in Berlin uh, with uh, Greg and Sarah hosting myself and, and her and, and Bill Kovaleski and uh, the folks from Victory and, uh, to do a beer years ago. And every third year we take turns to those three breweries and make a beer that we're super proud of uh, called Saison de Buff. Uh, and yes, yeah, so those of you that aren't familiar, uh, Stone recently announced that they're having to uh, pursue a lawsuit against the makers of Keystone Beer, where it really does look like they're calling the beer Stone and marketing it as Stone more than Keystone. It looked confusing to me. I'm not a lawyer. I don't play one on podcasts. I, but I am a brewer, and I'm a proud brewer uh, that, along with all these amazing co-workers, relies on the integrity of our trademarks um, and protects our trademarks vigorously when we have to, because uh, that is our brand, 
and uh, so I, you know, I understand where Stone is coming from, and I sent Greg a text saying I understand the the, the, the journey that you're on, and I think they made it an, the announcement in a very on-brand way for Stone. So I totally feel for our brothers and sisters at Stone right now. Um, from Greg, Brewmasters was an awesome show. That's odd. Was great too. Any plans to do something similar in the future? Uh, yeah, so we did a great, a really fun show on uh, Discovery a few years ago called uh, Brew Masters, um, and uh, now we are doing a new. Uh, I don't know if we've announced it yet, but we are doing a new uh, season of That's Odd. Let's drink it with our good friend Chris uh, at Complex and First We Feast. The great news is now Complex, First We Feast, their programming is found not just on their website or YouTube anymore, it's also gonna be on the Fuse Network, so it'll be in tons of households across America. We can't announce yet uh, some of the amazing artists that we'll be doing these episodes with, uh, but it's gonna be a pretty cool lineup. We start, we start shooting those late this spring to start airing them late summer, early fall. So look for more episodes of That's Odd, Let's Drink It coming at you. All right, final question. It went so fast. It did. A lot of time was when you're having fun. Um, two more flood. Let's do two, two more. more. Let's two do two more. more questions. Holy crap. The right, questions right, are right. rolling in. So, <laughs> Dogfish, are we still getting the Record Store Day Beer to Drink Music to, and I hope a new Music to Drink Beer to vinyl? Yes, here we are on the tingly precipice of Valentine's Day. And I'd love to let you know that the concept that we do with our pals at Sony, where we release a, 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 a beer that's inspired by this time of year, uh, in this case, Romantic Chemistry, uh, gets partnered with an awesome vinyl release that we curate, usually called uh, Music to Drink Beer To. This year, since we're putting this around Romantic Chemistry's release time, the album's evolved to be called Music to Drink Beer and Make Love To. So that's gonna be coming at you. We curated it so over the course of two sides, you get your flirty McFlirt flirt component of the evening into your slow dancing with various body parts uh, component of the musical lineup that I think people are really gonna enjoy with six packs of Romantic Chemistry and also they can enjoy it with a beautiful beer that we did with our pals from the Flaming Lips. So yeah, there's gonna be lots of fun stuff for Dogfish to celebrate. We're so proud to be the official beer at Record Store Day. There couldn't be a, a holiday more uh, dear to our hearts than one that celebrates uh, the awesome journey that indie music lovers and English, indie music retailers are on. Okay, last question. Last question. Are we going to be brewing another batch of Firefly Ale for the Woodlands this year for the Firefly Music Festival? Yeah, so we're really excited that we've been the uh, the forever craft beer uh, partner of Fire uh, Firefly, the awesome music fest that heads to Delaware this year. I'm I'm super psyched to uh, to see uh, uh, Kendrick play in our state and uh, Eminem's coming at us, the Killers. Uh, Warren G. Who doesn't like some slow jams? Warren G. Right? Um, and yes, this year we're doing Firefly Ale again, but this year there's a new twist on it. We're involving all of you out there in the cloud to help us decide about the evolution of Firefly Ale. Uh, pretty soon we're going to be posting something to Dogfish at social channels that invites you guys to vote on which of three recipes we've been having some fun playing around with in our R&D facilities will be the new iteration of Firefly Ale, so stay tuned for that. And with that, I'm getting thumbs up from people who are trying to tell me, not that I did a good job, but to shut up, because it's over. Ask Dogfish Live. Let's do this again sometime soon.